Good afternoon YouTube. This is the bottom side of the two burner combination cooktop or hob I guess they call them and this was set up for propane so it has a secondary low pressure regulator here and then that feeds the two burner valves right here and then these uh, burners have a piezoelectric start so this is the piezo right here the clear wire and then each valve has a thermocouple that goes back and shuts off the gas if the flame goes out. So that's kind of important safety feature. But what I need to do to convert this to natural gas is I need to get rid of this regulator. I think it's set for 11 inches water column and my natural gas needs to be at about 5 inches water column and coming out of the wall it's around seven or eight inches. So what I'm getting is an external regulator that I'll put off the end here. And so what I have is I've got a, a gas hookup hose. What I need to do is eliminate this regulator. Let me move the camera out of the way so I can get to all these fittings. I guess you have to loosen the flare to get this off because I can't turn the uh, regulator because the the burner is right underneath. This is 3 8 pipe thread so I have a coupler and then the hose kit came with a 3 8 to half inch flare so I can hook my gas pipe on there and the yellow one will run down to my gas manifold. There we go we're almost ready I think Tuesday the jets and the regulator will come in. So I just got this in the mail from Frank Hamilton. Yeah, there we are. So we've got two burners here, small burner. And so he set that one up at one millimeter and then larger burner at number 60. So these are the two jets or orifices for my two burner stove to convert from propane to natural gas. So yeah, the 0.65 millimeter went up to a number 60 size, and then the small burner had a half millimeter, and that goes up to one millimeter. He's got them all chamfered, all the holes. So that's the jets. I'll have to try those out, make sure they're the right size. They should be M6 by 0 0.75 millimeter thread pitch. So I'll check that out. So larger orifices. This was the original propane only regulator. It's fixed at 10 inch water column. This regulator, you can pop this top cover off. It's got a screwed on cap there. And then there's a plunger inside. And I believe you just take this plunger here and that's the natural gas position. And if you just reverse that plunger like that, it's set up for 10 inch water column and propane. So that's all I need to do on this regulator to change fuels. So when it's set up in natural gas, it doesn't push the spring down very far. So you can see that spring in there. If you switch this around with that in the, that position, it's pushing on that spring in there and putting more force which means it takes more pressure in the gas to push the valve in the regulator so you get a higher pressure. So to switch fuel I just have to be able to get to that screw top. I can unscrew it, flip the plunger over, put it back together. That takes care of switching fuels. And let me swing up here and we can take a look at how this is all going to go together here. So I've got my regulator. This is where my natural gas will connect in here. The gas pipe coming out of the wall of the house right down here. There's a valve. I'll probably put a union here so that I can just take this whole thing off if I have to fool with it. So I've got my natural gas coming in here. We'll go through the regulator or up here I've got a flare fitting and I'll be able to hook up a propane bottle here. 
So I would switch off the natural gas, shut the valve off here, and then I would hook up a propane bottle with a high pressure regulator to feed propane in. This will be capped off most of the time. That will feed into the regulator and then out of here I've got a T, there's a shutoff valve and a flare fitting for my stove up here and this has a safety shutoff so if the, the stove were to spring a leak this would shut off the gas if it gets above a certain amount of leakage and then off of here is off of a T goes to another shutoff valve and the grill will connect up to this fitting and the only time I'll use propane is if I don't have natural gas available this is just strictly for backup purposes I hope I never have to use this but the idea is I want to put it here and have it ready to go in case I need it and if I never need it that is fine if the situation warrants that I have to convert to propane that means there's Number one, no natural gas coming off the street, and there's no electricity for an extended period of time. So that'll be a pretty bad situation if I have to use this connection. I want to have it here in case I do need it, so I'm not chasing around trying to find all these parts when everybody's shut down. Anyway, that is my collection of parts. And let's see, the stove is about 10,000 BTU per hour. And the grill, I haven't picked a grill yet, but the ones I'm looking at are in the 60,000 BTU per range. You know, three burners, 20,000 BTUs per burner. So this regulator is good for 100,000. I should be well within the capabilities. And that way, once this is all put together, to switch fuels, I just shut off the gas down here, hook up propane, flip this plunger, change out the burners on the stove, change out the burners on the grill, and probably in 15 minutes I can be running on propane if I needed to. And again, I hope I never have to use this, but I want to have all the pieces to hook this up, have a propane bottle, a hose with a regulator and have these extra jets on hand. So, so if you have any questions about that, post up in the comment section below and otherwise stay tuned and I'll bring you back when I put these into the stove unit. And as always, thanks for watching.